Hey everyone, I'm Corey Deacon, neuroscientist and functional medicine practitioner at Nirvana Health. And I want to speak today about concussions and hormones. Okay, a lot of people don't know this, but concussions can actually affect our hormones quite drastically. Okay, not just our sex hormones, our stress hormones, our steroid hormones, but a whole cascade of hormones. And the way that this happens is we actually have a gland inside our brain called the hypothalamus. Okay, we have another brain right underneath of it called the pituitary. And these two glands are actually the master glands of the body. They're the ones that regulate all of our hormones within our body. Our peptide hormones, our appetite hormones, hormones that regulate our blood sugar, hormones that regulate stomach acid release, hormones that regulate all of our stress and sex hormones, uh, hormones that regulate hormones to retrieve water and reabsorb water and minerals within the body. So a lot of very, very, very important hormones are regulated from that level. Now, what ends up happening with concussion and, and actually even subconcussive blows, which is uh, basically a, a blow to the head that doesn't technically cause a concussion. It doesn't trigger the symptoms of concussion. It's not severe enough to be categorized as a concussion. Uh, these, in my opinion, are almost more dangerous because we look at them like they're not a big deal. But these subconcussive blows are actually cumulative. So the more of these little hits that we get, the more affected our nervous system gets. And we can get to the point where years later, sometimes decades later, the cascade of reactions of hormone problems is actually caught up to us and all of a sudden it starts causing us problems, okay? And, you know, kind of number, number top five hormone problems related to head injury is low energy or fatigue, poor sleep, irritability, agitation, anger, depression, anxiety, or other emotional problem, chronic pain, and gut-related issues okay so those are all related to our hormone cascade and how it's affected by head injury so what ends up happening with this pituitary damage is we don't really know how it's going to affect somebody okay so everybody's affected a lot differently which is why it's important to work with somebody that understands all the different hormones that come from that level and how they affect everything else downstream so very, very, very first important thing is getting those all assessed, okay? Because it's going to be different in every person, okay? The most common being cortisol, DHEA, or adrenal hormones being affected due to a hormone called ACTH in the brain getting disrupted. So what ends up happening here is our, we go into a state of what we call hypocortisolism, okay? Cortisol in the blood goes low, Okay, and it's usually functionally low, which means your doctor's not gonna be concerned because it's not so low that you have an adrenal crisis or Addison's disease or these other types of serious conditions, but you're just generally fatigued, you're generally irritable, your blood sugars don't regulate well, so you feel like you have to eat all the time, you feel tired after you eat. Um, you may have fertility issues, okay? If your blood sugars aren't regulating well, one of the most common symptoms is fertility problems, okay? So we, looking at that, we need to do things to get the adrenals working properly. And there's lots of, lots of different types of hormone replacements that are very safe that can be done. There's a lot of different nutrition aspects that can be done to help manage blood sugar regulation problems. And in another video, I talk about neurofeedback and repairing the circuitry at the higher level of the brain to get those hormones communicating properly, okay? Now, the other thing that I'll find is a lot of times this is confused for adrenal fatigue, and it's not the same. Adrenal fatigue is different, okay? This is actually a problem because the brain is not telling the adrenals what to produce, okay? So that this is, it's a different problem. If you're going down the adrenal fatigue avenue and you're not getting better, that's why. It's because it's a brain-related problem, not directly an adrenal-related problem. So that, that's kind of the number, number one problem. Um, number two problem with emotional regulation, a lot of times you're seeing involvement of the sex or steroid, other steroid hormones. So estrogen, uh, progesterone, pregnenolone, testosterone, okay, these are the kind of common main ones that we work with. 
And if you have estrogen or progesterone problems, you're gonna tend to have a lot of anxiety, a lot of memory problems, because what happens is progesterone is required for serotonin to work in the brain. So most of us know about serotonin. If you don't, it's the happy neurotransmitter. It's the neurotransmitter that we target with antidepressants, okay? So serotonin is very important for mood, it's very important for sleep, and it's important for memory and cognition and, and being able to be social with each other. So if progesterone levels drop, that's going to be an issue. Uh, progesterone problems dropping, progesterone dropping can also cause headaches. It can cause fertility problems. It can cause menstrual cycle problems as well, uh, especially with uh, pain issues around menstruation. With estrogen problems and estrogen metabolism problems, uh, issues if, you're, if you are menstruating are gonna be worse between ovulation and menstruation, okay, because of the estrogen metabolites building up and, and inflammation building up. Um, estrogen is also required for dopamine and acetylcholine to work. So focus, organization, executive function, motivation, and memory, all very important. If estrogen is not around stimulating the receptors in the brain, you're going to get all of those symptoms. Okay, So that's kind of number two problem in terms of, of hormones. Uh, number three and four problem, looking at uh, inflammatory issues, gut problems, and pain. Uh, this is very, very variable, and there's a lot of reasons why this happens, but the number two hormones involved in this are something called alpha MSH and something called VIP hormone. So these two hormones actually run the inflammatory cascade and the immune system regulation. Okay, so what ends up happening when we hit our head and those get disrupted? Well, VIP's job is to seal up the gut lining. Okay, there's a, a phenomenon called leaky gut or gut permeability that happens and VIP is responsible for making sure that doesn't happen, it seals the gut up. If it doesn't do that well, Everything that's going on in the gut, all the microbes, all of the proteins, all the antigens will overstimulate the immune system. And if it does that for too long, we'll actually get an effect on the brain. Okay, we're going to stop producing serotonin, dopamine's not going to work as well. Uh, we can get a whole range of problems from attention deficit disorder to memory issues to sleep problems to anxiety to depression. Right, and these are highly documented inflammatory problems in the gut relating to psychological complaints. Uh, a lot of you may have heard of the gut-brain axis and this is how it's affected. So VIP is very important for that. The other thing that VIP does is it seals up the blood-brain barrier. Okay, very, very important. It's like the gut barrier of the brain. So if things are getting into the nervous system that shouldn't be, again, we're going to amp up inflammation and we're not gonna be able to reverse it. You know, hyperbaric oxygen and IVs and, and chiro techniques, they might temporarily make it feel better, but it's not gonna be a long-term viable solution because the real problem is the hormone not being there to tell the body what to do, okay? My favorite hormone, and arguably one of the most important peptide hormones in the body is something called MSH. It stands for melanocyte stimulating hormone, okay? It is what allows us to tan. So when our brain is exposed to UV light through the eyeball, okay, our brain produces MSH. MSH regulates the immune system. So when we look at the immune system, there's two divisions of the immune system. There's a smart division called the adaptive, and there's a dumb division called the innate immune system. When MSH levels are low and it's not functioning properly, the dumb division of the immune system amplifies and the smart division suppresses itself. When this happens, you get massive amounts of inflammation. You get the immune system going where it shouldn't be going. Joint tissue, muscle tissue. This is where you start developing pain, maybe even to the point of arthritis, okay? Muscle pain, muscle cramping, uh, tightness up in the upper neck through down the entire back. Uh, you're also gonna get problems with infections activating. So if you've ever had a viral infection, which by the way, everybody has, okay, it can start activating. I've even seen crazy things like Lyme disease activate in somebody because that immune system shifted enough with that MSH going out of whack. 
So very, very, very important hormones for regulating the immune system and regulating the inflammatory cascade. And if you don't get them those levels up and get them working properly, again, most of the things you're gonna do are gonna fail because you're not addressing the underlying problem. There are very safe peptide replacements that can be done and there's some very good protocols that can be done to get these functioning properly. And again, in my other video, we talk about neurofeedback, the very same thing. It can work to get that cascade of those, those peptide hormones regulated properly. Okay. And the last aspect is gut. Uh, I tend to see a lot of gut related problems and you're gonna see it from the top of the gut all the way down. So you may have heartburn problems all of a sudden. Now there's a hormone called gastrin. Its job is to tell the stomach how much acid to release. And if it releases too much, of course, we feel heartburn. The other thing that's going to happen because of the nerve that's affected called the vagus nerve. Okay, the vagus nerve comes down the side of the neck, down underneath of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is what we use to deep breathe and push our organs down when we deep breathe. Okay, this, this nerve is very important for motility, which means how well things are going to move through the gut. The other thing this nerve does is it tells the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas what to secrete. So the ability for us to digest and break down food becomes impaired if we aren't having proper stimulation from the vagal or the vagus nerve. So you'll sometimes get bloating, you'll get indigestion, you'll get heartburn when those secretions aren't being stimulated. A lot of people will get diarrhea fluctuating with constipation because they're not getting proper movement and everything wants to kind of get stuck in the gut and then the gut tries to push it all out all at once. So you get also what we call malabsorption. So now you're gonna have weight loss problems, weight gain problems, right? In conjunction with some of the other hormone problems we talked about, you're, it's, gonna, it's gonna get stuck. Okay, so very, very common to see weight problems in people. And the other problem with motility issues and poor secretion is you can get overgrowth of microbes that you don't want overgrowing, okay? So we have three types of microbes in the gut. We have beneficial microbes, which are things like probiotics that we need to literally need to survive. We have something called commensal organisms, which we all have, we just don't want them overgrowing. If they overgrow, it's not good. And then we have pathogens. Pathogens are never good. We don't want them there in any amount. Okay, so when we get a triggering of gut problems because of vagus nerve problems with a hit to the head or, or a whiplash injury in the neck, now all of a sudden pathogens and commensal organisms start overgrowing and we can even have the problem where good bacteria or good microbes start decreasing and you get a complete overwhelm in the gut from pathogenic organisms, which you have to go in and clean up. There's not a lot of, of ways you can do it otherwise. Diet is very limited. And this is what I see a lot of people do is they get on nutritional plans and diet plans. They'll get a little bit better and then they plateau. It's because the diet's not usually the problem. It's the microbes overgrowing in the gut. They need to be taken care of and you need to get on a protocol to do that. If you do, all of your symptoms can improve. And we've seen countless amounts of people. We have countless reviews of people who have been able to completely resolve their concussion problems by addressing these hormone problems and these gut problems. And it's actually amazing how life-changing it is. If you guys have any questions about the hormone effect on concussion, please look us up, check out our other videos. Hopefully we can give you some insights. Thanks so much for listening.